the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding verse 6 in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the principle of acknowledgement behold what manner of love the father has given unto us behold what manner of love the father has given unto us that we that we should be called the sons of god That we that we should be called the sons of God, that we should be called the sons of God. Oh, beyond what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Say that we that we should be called the sons of God. We should be called the sons of God. Be oh, behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold, what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we, that we should be called the sons of God. That, that we, that we should be called the sons of God. I am a son of God. I am privileged. Amen. What am I doing? I am acknowledging who I am in the Lord. There's somebody the principle of acknowledgement. All right. I have made us understand something very practical that the kingdom of God operates on principles and it is our understanding and obedience to these principles that provoke the experience of the benefits whatever you must benefit the benefits in his kingdom can only be activated by your obedience to the principles of the kingdom so it's important that every time we bring the word of god to you we must show you what you have to do to experience god are you with me because many of us as i said we want to experience god we want to walk in divine health we want to walk in divine strength we want to walk in divine well. We want to see everything God has said become flesh in our life. One of the greatest things that frustrates Christians is when they don't see the fulfillment of the scripture or the prophecies on their head. It is very frustrating to live a life that is contradictory to what God has said by the scripture or by the prophet. It begins to make you doubt God. It begins to make you doubt if God is real. It makes you doubt the prophet. It makes you doubt the Bible. And you ask yourself, if these things are true, why don't I see them? That is why we have pastors. God said in Jeremiah 3 verse 15, I shall give you shepherds after my heart that will feed the sheep with knowledge and understanding. That's what the sheep should feed on. And those are what? the principles. So tell somebody the kingdom of God operates on principles. It is your understanding and obedience of these principles that provoke the experience of the benefits of the kingdom. Alright? Benefits of the kingdom not of the principles of the kingdom. Now watch this child of God. God loves you. Amen. God has blessed you. 
Amen. But the Bible says in John 1 14, and the word became flesh and we saw the glory. When do we see the glory? When the word became flesh. It means the glory of Christianity is in the fulfillment of divine, of what God has said either by his word or by the mouth of the prophet. And the word became flesh and we saw. People will not see until the word become flesh. We don't just want to walk around and be telling people, I am this. No, they have to see. Let your light so shine that they will imagine or they will see. The world does not have to imagine that we are blessed. They have to see that we are blessed. And for them to see that we are blessed, there are certain things we must know and do. There is no glory until the world becomes flesh. There is no glory unto the things that God has said by the word of scripture become manifested. Even Jesus said the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. Are you following me here? Now, the principles of the kingdom are what we are supposed to say and do to see what God has promised in his word or by the mouth of the prophets. The principles of the kingdom are what we're supposed to say and do to see what God has promised in His in the scripture or by the mouth of the prophet. Let us see Exodus chapter 4, verse 12 and verse 15. The principles of the kingdom are what we're supposed to say and do to see what God has promised in the scripture or by the mouth of the prophet. And God said to Moses, Now I'm therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Teach you what you shall say. How you will talk to see the power. How you have to speak to see the miracle. Verse 15 now. God says, Now see verse 15. And you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. You see the teachings? What you shall say and what you shall do. These are principles. What can I say? Oh God my father. I read the scripture. The Bible declares. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not lack. And I don't have house rent. What shall I say or do to have it come to pass? That's what you need to know. That's what we preach. So you can know what to say and what to do. This is what we call principles. I will teach you what you will say and what you will do. So the greatest teaching is what is what reveals to you what you ought to say and what you have to do to experience what God has promised. I will teach you what you will say and what you will do. Lift your hands and say, Oh Holy Spirit, teach me what I shall say and what I shall do to see what God has promised. One of these principles that I want to bring out to you is the principle of acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Let us see again the scripture, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He shall do what? Are you seeing? You want it is impossible to walk in divine direction without obeying the principle of acknowledgement. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Anywhere you see frustration and confusion is a sign that divine direction is absent. Nobody walks by divine direction and ends up in confusion and frustration. Anywhere. You see somebody living a life of regret is a person that did not follow divine direction. There are no regrets in divine direction. When God leads you, he does not lead you into a place of failure. God cannot lead you into a place of shame. Can I tell you something? God may lead you around, but God can never lead you wrong. You may not understand how the leading is. God led Joseph from his father's house into the dry pit. It was God. From the dry pit into Potiphar's house. It was God. From Potiphar's house into the prison. It was God. From the prison to the throne. 
He may lead you round, but he can never lead you wrong. So if you are actually seeing your life today, and you don't understand things happening, no divine direction. But you cannot walk in divine direction until you obey the principle of Jesus will be until you practice. I like that word better. Put practice there. You cannot walk by divine direction until you practice the principle of acknowledgement. Acknowledge him and you will direct your path. You will not have to be asking people, I don't know where I should marry, I don't know where I should travel. Acknowledge him and you will direct. Lara Kadasi Kapra. He will direct your path. You shall not be confused. You will not find yourself doing things that you feel dissatisfied. You feel lack of fulfillment. Why? Because you are not operating by divine direction. Can you give a word to somebody? Tell somebody you can never walk in divine direction until you practice the principle of acknowledgement. Tell somebody else you can never walk in divine direction until you practice the principle of acknowledgement. The presence of frustration, confusion, and regret is a sign that you are not walking by divine direction. You, oh God. If God, if you are submitted to the leadership of God, you may never have married this man that is killing you now. If you are submitted to the leadership of God, you may never have done that business that crumbled your life. There are no regrets when God leads a man. There is no confusion. Right now, I don't know what to do. Yes, there is a moment that you don't know what to do. He said that is when he will direct you. Listen to this child of God. This is very important. If you must not live a life of regret confusion and frustration you must be very careful to walk by divine direction he says trust in the lord lean not on your own understanding in other words he says you are not a fool he says yes you have an understanding he said but if you lean on your own understanding you will fail lean not on your own reasoning Lean not on your own opinion. Friends, one of the reasons why many people cannot fulfill their destiny is because they are leaning on their understanding. If you lean on your own understanding, you will never be fully equipped to fulfill your destiny in Christ. Because there are things that will happen to you that your understanding cannot totally comprehend. If Joseph had to lean on his understanding, he would think that God had left him when he entered the dry pit. If he had to lean on his understanding, he would think that God had left him when he went to prison because Joseph was an innocent man accused by Potiphar's wife. He was accused and God did not come down to defend him. God did not defend Joseph. Joseph was accused falsely and he was sent to prison. But he did not lean on his own understanding. He acknowledged the Lord. And, say, and the Lord was with him because he acknowledged the Lord. You have understanding. You have knowledge. If you lean on your own understanding, your marriage can never be good. If you lean on your own understanding, your business cannot be fruitful. Stop leaning on your understanding. The wisdom of man will fail. The abilities of man will fail. The strength of man will fail. Only the grace of God will prevail. Don't lean on your understanding. Don't lean on your strength. Do not make projects depending on your strength on your physical capacity on your financial capacity make projects depending on grace not on strength because your understanding will fail it will fail you say yes you have an understanding yes you have a brain you say you are not a fool I agree God say I know you are wise I know you have certificate I know that uh, you had 10 boyfriends before I know you understand marriage you say but for this marriage uh, don't lean on your understanding your marriage will not work 
I, God said, I know you think you have read books. He said, but for this one, don't lean on your understanding. This marriage will not work. God said, I know you have been doing this business for 20 years. He said, but if you must succeed, I know you know, they come to me. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 5, Bible specify how Jesus stepped into the boat of Peter. Now, Peter was a man that had been doing fishing for more than 50 years because the father of Peter was a fisherman, so fishing was a family business. And Jesus stepped in his boat, and if you understand the laws of fishing, people do fishing mostly at night because when the sea is calm, the fish rise up and you can easily catch them. So, in the fishermen always fish in the night more than the day. But Jesus stepped into the boat of Peter and said, Launch out your net. And Peter said, Sir, wait. I'm a fisherman. I have been toiling all night. I have been walking in this same water all night. In this same water, and I have caught nothing. Number one, sir, we catch fish by the night. I have toiled all night. Number two, this is the same water I was walking. Then he said, Nevertheless, I will not lean on my understanding. At your word, at your understanding, I will do so. The same water where he caught no fish. When he rejected his understanding, fruitfulness came. There should be a time in your life where you say, God, Lord, I don't know how to treat my wife. Even if you think you know. Lord, I don't know. Help me. There must be a time in your, in your walk with God that you've come before me and say, Lord, I thought I knew how to do business. I don't know, sir. Teach me. Lean not on your own understanding. We think we know. We think we can do it. But the Lord said, without me, you can do nothing. Everything you try to do, leaning on your understanding, can never create eternal relevance. If it must have relevance and value, stop thinking you know. Most of us, what is killing us is that we think we know. It is what we know. We were preaching to a man one time He was a philosopher He said there is no God He has so much learned He thinks he knows There is no God Sir, lean not on your understanding He said out of the mouth of babes He will declare wisdom You may be shocked that a little child can teach you The Lord Jesus was 12 years old When he began teaching Pharisees because there was the wisdom of God operating in him. The Pharisees leaned on their understanding to interpret scripture. Jesus leaned on the understanding of the spirit to interpret scripture. If you lean on your understanding to interpret scripture, you can never experience a fulfillment of scripture. Don't interpret them the way you think. How many of us still depend on God? We depend on ourselves. There is a time in the life of everyone when it appears as you don't know what to do what do you do when well, you don't know what to do you say acknowledge him what do you say when you have tried everything in the marriage you have done you have read done everything and at that point in the home there is no still peace he said it's okay acknowledge me i will direct your path because there will be a time no matter how you pray friends no matter how you fast there will be a day and a time where you seem as if God does not exist where you find yourself in confusion where you begin to doubt if you are a child of God can you believe child of God that Jesus Christ our Lord who kept on saying that I am going to die I am going to die on the night before his death he went and prayed and said Father take this cup away from me even Jesus and he told the apostle he said he said, my heart is very sorrowful. I'm feeling bad. And Jesus was confused. Him that said he came to die, he prayed again not to die. Say, Father, take this cup. Why? That is humanity. But that is the Lord. The God of faith. But he said, I don't know what to do. I'm shocked. On the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. We all know that God did not forsake him. But that, that is what happens. Every time a Christian is going through his season of the cross, if he does not acknowledge God, he will not resurrect from the tomb. Because after Jesus said, 
Eloi, Eloi, Lama Sabashtani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He now said, Father, into your hands. He said, at the end, let's see you be my pa. After she has cried, oh God, why have you abandoned my marriage? He turned again and said, Father, into your hand, I commit my marriage. She first of all cried against the marriage. Humanity took over. After she said, no, into your hands. Father, take this cup for me. But anyway, let your will be done. You see the fight? The flesh is coming out. There are times when you feel confused. You feel dissatisfied with life. You look at your life, you look at your marriage and it looks like you have made a mistake. You don't see the mistake. You don't know why you are not happy. No matter there is no happiness, it happens. There are times where you have invested your all and believe by reason of your investment there will be success in your marriage or success in your business. But despite all your investment, at that point, it looks like everything you have done has turned against you. Yes, it comes. He said, in that time, lean not on your own understanding. What do you do when you are at the crossroads of life? What do you do when you don't understand? You have received prophecies from many prophets about marital blessing. And you don't see understand what you are doing wrong while you are not married. Lean not on your own understanding at that point. When it seems as if God has failed, when it looks as if prophecy has failed, at that point, you say, lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will direct you into marital peace. He will direct you into financial rest. He will direct you into health. He will direct you into wealth. There must be a point, child of God, where you understand that even your prayer cannot help you. Where you understand that even your fasting cannot help you. That's why you say, Father, you talk like Jesus, into your hand. You may have abandoned my flesh, but into your hands I commit my spirit. In other words, even if this cross is destroying my flesh, because my spirit is not destroyed, my flesh will resurrect. Jesus said, Oh God, you have abandoned my flesh, but please take care of my spirit. I may not understand my marriage now, but take care of my soul, because if my soul is preserved, my marriage will resurrect. It happens. What do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you say when you don't know what to say? When you have come to the end of your ability. You have come to the limit of your wisdom. You have come to the limit of your strength. And you turn and look behind. It looks as if your life is a disgrace. You look at people that hope on you and you feel like you are failing them. But you don't know what you are doing wrong. You start praying. Any curse in my life be broken. You don't even know there is a curse. But because you are confused of what to finally pray, you think it's a curse. After praying about the curse, you say, maybe there's an altar. Any altar break. When you start announcing fast with that revelation just because you don't understand. Why? You are still leaning on your own understanding. There must be a point where you run. Man, the Bible says in Isaiah 37. It says, and the king sent a letter to Ezekiah. He said, Ezekiah, I'm coming to your nation and I will destroy all of you. Now, Ezekiah is a king. He has an army. But the king wrote in the letter, the king said, I destroyed about 40 nations before coming to you. And they also had God. He said, don't be deceived. That God you are claiming, when I come, that God cannot save you. Ezekiah read the letter. He did not call for the commander of the army. The Bible said, Ezekiah took the letter and ran and came to the altar and opened it before God on the temple. He said, Lord, look at what this king has said. Now, that was a king. He came at the end of his limit. He recognized the place of God. He said, I have an army. But if a man can threaten me, threaten plus my God, then I don't think I can talk again. He did not reply the king. I was saying he came to the altar and spread it out. There are some problems in your life that can only be solved when you spread them out before the Lord on the altar. Lord, this marriage I tried. I don't know what to do. Just lay on the altar. You don't pray for long. You stay quiet. He, the king came and acknowledged God. He didn't tell God what to do. He just told God what the man said. He said, this is the medical report, Lord. 
I have served you. <laughs> Ezekiah was sick. And as the prophet came with the prophecy, the Lord said, As I go and tell Ezekiah, prepare your home, you will die. As I say, hey, Ezekiah, God said you will die. Ezekiah, look at his children. 10 years, 12, 14. He looked at the kingdom. Hi. He turned and went to the wall. He said, hey, hey God, my son. So you want to kill me now? Because he knows that sickness cannot kill him unless God leave it. He said, God. He said, I have served you. And I still want to serve you. I still have plans of service. I still have things to do for your kingdom. He said, Ezekiah turned to the wall, lifted his hands to God, and began crying. Turning to the wall means turning your back from the well. Because this is people. He did not turn to the men. When Isaiah announced the prophecy, there were people there. He turned his back on the well. Turn his back on his understanding. Turn his back on his certificate. Turn his back on his wisdom. And went to the war. I don't want to see the world. Lord, I have it. How will I die now? He didn't speak for long. God said, Isaiah, go and tell Ezekiah. I have added 15 years. Why? Because Ezekiah acknowledged God. God directed his path. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me he leads me besides still waters he restores my soul listen to this he guides me who guides me he guides me in parts of righteousness for his name's sake even though i walk through before saying i walk through who is guiding me so if god is the one guiding me if i see satan on the road i cannot be afraid because god is the one even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear not even because the one who is guiding me is there. He now says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear not evil for your for you are with what is that? Acknowledgement. Even though I walk through sickness, I walk through pain, I will fear not evil. Why? For you are with do you see acknowledgement? The, the silence of God is not the absence of God. It is your consciousness of the presence of Christ, even in his silence, that provokes his manifestation in your life. Even when God is not talking and you are crying and praying, it's as if God does not care, but you are so conscious, for you are with me. I may not see you, I may not hear you, you are with me. I cannot see you. But I see all your wonders. I worship you, oh Lord. I cannot see you, but I see all your wonders. I worship you, oh Lord. Even though I walk through, I will not acknowledge the valley. You are with me. I. You are with me. In a family, girls don't marry. Uh -uh. You are with me. Madam, you have, your tubes are blocked. You cannot have a child. Uh -uh. You are with me. What are you acknowledging? The doctor's report or God's report? You are with me. Acknowledging. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are. Hey, Kadiaka. That is where the matter is. For you are with me. It is that sentence that changes the whole story. Even though I was born in a family where women don't marry, you are with me. Even though I was born in a family where people die before that time, you are with me. So the only, the only assurance that my story will not end where the devil decides is because I acknowledge that God is with me. If God is with me, then I cannot end in the valley of the shadow of death because there is a table prepared. There is a table prepared and if God is with me, I will get to the table. He said, you, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Yes, there is evil, but because you are with me. Then the next verse now, you prepare a table. 
some people never get to that table because in the valley they don't recognize God they see only that problem I don't have money for house rent hey, not gonna lie, you might be Christian, not pay rent they, are talking, they start talking like pagans they start talking like unbelievers they don't know that there is a season of your life where you are in green pastures another season, God leads you beside sea waters a third season, God leads you in the valley a fourth season where he prepares a table this Psalm 20, did he show you the five, four seasons of a Christian's life? pasture another time, it's not pasture, it's water another time, you will not enter problem it happens, it, it, it keeps happening in your life you should know which season you are but no matter the season you face in your life your salvation is in the acknowledgement of the presence of God with you You, when you go through the water the water shall not do what? when you go through the fire you are always there for me you are always there for me when no one else is there you are always there for me there is nothing in this world that can take your place in my life no matter what comes my way hey like a brush you are always there there is nothing in this world that can take your place in my life no matter what comes my way you are always there for me doesn't matter the season have you not heard the song God of the mountain is the God in the valley. God of the day, He is still God in the night. God said, Am I a God who is near and not afar off? Even God talk up. He said, Am I a God who walks only near? He said, Wherever I'm not, he said, anywhere. David said, Even if I go to hell, <laughs> I cannot run from you. He said, Even if I hide in darkness, darkness is like light to you. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. Friends, there are seasons. But no matter the season, acknowledge God. There are times your marriage will be so sweet like heaven. And there are some weeks you see crisis as if Satan. It happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. What must you do? As long as Jesus, our Lord, how to carry his cross and be crucified we cannot escape the season of the cross he said whoever wants to follow me let him carry his cap let him carry his crown let him carry his cross and follow me but no matter what happens no matter what happens i know my redeemer lives i know he's not far from me now, you, wait. You see, you can sing it. Do you believe it? Because many of us, when things start happening away, we change the way we talk immediately. The same us that were singing and jumping. Your business shake for one month. <laughs> your confessions become... You, you change. You change against God. You turn against the church. You turn against your pastor. You, you turn against everyone. Then when things balance back, you now come back and say you are committed. No, no, no. If your commitment to God is based on the seasons of your life, then you will never be truly committed to him. Your commitment must be based on your conviction, your assurance that he is my God. Our prophet said, he said, even if the tree does not bear fruit, yet will I praise him Job said even if he slays me <laughs> oh Rakaba Zinja someone say acknowledge me so what does it mean to acknowledge simple to recognize 
to acknowledge means to recognize by confession or actions acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your ways it doesn't matter where the devil keeps you it does not matter where your own mistakes bring you into if you acknowledge God he will take you out of there pray for somebody here this morning that God is going to direct your path into the place he has prepared for you amen. let your amen be louder than that amen. did you answer oh Lord you are my God sit down so number one we must acknowledge God you must acknowledge who We must acknowledge God, number one, for who he is, which is worship. What is that? Worship is acknowledging God for who he is to you. Even when he has done nothing for you. You are my Lord, you are my God. You are the eyes I used to see. You are the key that opens the door. You are the lover of my soul the bush that burneth and never comes you what shall I render to you oh my God I will bow down and worship your name you are my God the first key friend is worship worship there are certain times you enter an, an issue huh? what do you do you now find yourself there is no way out. You are stuck. Are you remember? You made a way. When I back were against the wall. And it seems as if it was over. Who made a way? Made a way. So we standing here. So we standing here. Only because. We are not standing here because our uncle paid our school fees. We are not standing here because my neighbor paid my husband. I am standing here because he made the way. Worship. The first way to acknowledge God is to worship him. You've been faithful, Lord. What is that? Worship from the ages past that is worship god 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 is saying in this word he said when you get if you want me to direct your path acknowledge me in worship the second way acknowledge god for what he has done which is called praise worship is acknowledging god for who he is praise is acknowledging god for what he has done for you move mountains you cause walls to fall now what does that mean it means I'm talking about power now. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall. By your power, nothing is impossible. I'm saying what praise. You acknowledge God for what He has done. The third way, you acknowledge God for what He has said. Which is what? Thanksgiving. Say what he has said. Give him thanks for his promises. In the midst of sickness, thank him that he promised good health. Acknowledging God means confessing what he has said. So, are you seeing something here? That we acknowledge God, number one, was our what? Our confession, worship, praise, and his word. Number two, you acknowledge God by obeying his word. Matthew 7, 21. Not all who call me Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom. But they who do. Every time you obey divine instructions, you are acknowledging God. That is why the day Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God sent them out of the 
the garden and satan became the god of this world why did he become the god of this world in the day that adam and eve obeyed satan satan became their god that's how satan became the god of this world so to acknowledge god is to obey what he has said child of god be very careful of disobedience when you disobey god you are acknowledging whoever you obey because whoever you obey is the one you have chosen to serve is the one you are chosen to be under when god gives you instructions obey them because obeying god is acknowledging him are you following me here number two you must acknowledge what you have in god show me philemon chapter 1 verse 6 that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in christ jesus hey until you acknowledge what you know you will never possess what you know you know that you are healed but you are saying i am sick what you say is what you acknowledge you must acknowledge what you have in christ friends oh when you look at yourself there is no money don't say i'm poor bible says that christ became poor that we may become rich don't say i am weak let the weak say i'm strong acknowledge what you have no matter the oppressions of satan in your life never acknowledge them acknowledge the lord and you will give you testimony over them stop telling everyone what satan is doing start telling people who you are in god i am the lights of the world i am blessed i am not these things we are preaching now that's what we don't take serious you will be shocked how you will see me suffering because you don't understand the principle i have told you bible says in Proverbs 18 21 life and death are in the power of the tongue be careful what you say what you say is what you see what you see is what you will have what you will experience don't talk anyhow because you may think you were joking what you say you may have it whatever name adam called the animals god accepted people in my family don't marry is that what you should be talking a christian will say i have a spiritual husband is that how you should talk even if somebody sleep with you your dream you don't have a spiritual husband stop acknowledging evil when i mean to acknowledge means to 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 confess to confess evil and this is where there's a problem people who are not acknowledging who god is to them are people whose heart has been captured by worries so all they do is complain what satan has done to them they complain they complain be very careful complain complain is a destroyer show me numbers 21 verse 4 i want to show you complain it's from mount hall by the way of the sea to go around the land of edom and the soul of the people became very became what begin to watch how complain come complain that we were discouragement all right move ahead and the people spoke against god and against moses why have you brought us up out of egypt to die in the wilderness for there is no food and no water and our soul lost this worthless bread verse 6 so the lord sent fiery serpents to bite them and they died listen to this god was taking them they suffered in egypt they cried god was taking them to the promised land bible says god gave them food from heaven but they called it worthless bread you see complain complain is what makes you criticize god for what he has not done while ignoring what he has done we, we this worthless bread what nonsense bread is this manna that was baked from heaven what a privilege of eating food they say they ate the food of angels but when a when when your heart becomes controlled by the devil you begin to despise the blessings of god a man can call his wife what a foolish wife how i wish i had something better how i wish <laughs> luck children they stood and began calling god's gift 
worthless, useless bread, manna, useless, useless wife, useless children, useless business. Listen to this child of God. Never forget what I'm about to tell you now. Whatever you are despising today is somebody's prayer point. There is something you have that you are neglecting. Somebody is fasting to have it. I have just 2,000. There is somebody now that is in the hospital. One time I heard somebody died because she didn't have 5,000 francs to add her bills in the hospital. And they left her outside and she died. Some of you are saying, I have just 5,000. And what you think is just for somebody, it is all. Be careful. Don't complain. Acknowledge what you have. Acknowledge what you have. It is true that Satan has done some things. Don't give him too much. Don't give him too much importance to be talking. What? No. How are you? I am favored. Don't be terrible, Satan. Who cares? No, there is no greater way to offend the devil than to ignore his works over your life. That you sleep in the night, they come and give you food. You wake up, you praise God, you jump. He says, Satan, you are a fool. I don't care about you. But when the devil come and give you food in your dream and you wake up and the whole money you are thinking I don't chop it, why go be it? And you become sad, why? I chop for dream today. Look at your life. You eat, you wake up and say, well, no challenge. Bible says they shall eat daily thing. It shall not harm them. I don't care. You worship God. Let the devil know that no matter what he does, he cannot steal your joy in the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. So, when some kind of times come to your life, don't give him too much importance. Let him know that Satan, I'm still smiling. Because what Satan wants to take away from you is your joy. Because in joy, there is strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So if I lose my joy, I have lost my strength. Are you following what God is saying here? Stop acknowledging evil. You have made the devil too important. The Bible says in 1st chapter 17, he said, when Goliath came out for 40 days, he said, who will come and fight me? He said, all oh, the people of Israel ran for him, including Saul. When David came and said, I want to fight Goliath, listen to Saul, the king. Goliath said, he said, sir, he said, David, you are 17. He said, Goliath has been fighting war from your age. And Goliath is about 45 now. He said, number two, Goliath's sword is bigger than your head. Goliath is five times bigger than you in body. Number three, Goliath's armor can cover you from top to bottom. Look at what he was saying. Then David replied. He said, I was keeping my father's sheep. A lion came, I kill it. A bear came, I kill it. He said, the God who did that to the bear and lion would do it to Goliath. Somebody had an acknowledgement. Oh my God, shout it louder. Shout acknowledgement. Let us see Numbers chapter 14 from verse 1 to verse 8. So, all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. <laughs> verse 2. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt. Or if only we had died in this wilderness. Look at ungrateful people. Ingratitude is a sin. It's a curse. Look at what they were saying. To Moses that risk his life to save them yeah why has the lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword why that our wives and children should become victim will it not be better for us to return to egypt hey hear what they are saying so they said to one another let us select a leader in other words we reject moses and return to egypt the third point, you must acknowledge the grace you are under. It's very important. They said, he said, they spoke against Aaron and Moses. Said, Get out. What? Fake prophet. You brought us to come and die here. You deceive us. Let us select a new leader. We reject Moses. Moses was the God given leader. The one that carried the grace for them. They rejected him. They rejected the grace. Oh God my father. They spoke against Moses and Aaron. 
the spoke against the one that was ordained by God to feed them with the word. The spoke against them. You must acknowledge the grace. Now it's not about, I will show you something. Let's continue with the scripture there. See what God, see how God will reply them. If the Lord delights in us, okay, this is Joshua saying, Joshua saying, no, no, let us trust him. Let us follow Moses who will enter the land. See verse 27, hear what God says when God comes. God says, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation? Who complain against me? I have heard the complaint which the children of Israel make against me. Verse 28, hear God says, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so will I do to you. Verse, verse 29. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. Say so you shall all die from 20 years and above. You shall die. Why? They spoke against the grace. <laughs> in times of trial and tribulation, every time the devil wants you to speak against the grace that is covering you he makes you see a weakness and interpret it in your own way but i want to tell you something and i beg you please no matter the mistake i make don't speak against me pray for me because if you speak against me and this is the grace that cover you you will not escape the judgment no matter the mistake we make in this church no matter what my wife does no matter what the leaders in this church do i am begging you from my heart i don't speak against you no matter your own mistake don't speak against us i'm not saying it because if you speak against us it does not change us don't tell us speak or not speak there is nothing i'm not made by your speaking or your own speaking what i'm saying is this that if you speak against the grace that covers you you have exposed yourself and your family to the spirit of death. Do you understand how important this word I'm bringing is? Acknowledge the grace. Bible says somewhere, send Saul to war. Saul went to war and won. And came back and didn't go and see somewhere. He went and built a monument for himself. He did not acknowledge the grace that brought him victory. God rejected him. Okay, in fact, show me second Kings chapter 4 verse 1 and verse 7 let me show you a mystery there so elisha said to her what will i do for you tell me what do you have in the house and the woman said your missus has nothing in the house but a jar of oil then he said go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors empty vessels do not gather just a few verse 4 and when you have come in you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones verse 5 so she went from him and shut the door and be behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out. Verse 6. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. And the oil, the oil was flowing from who? From Elisha. As she spoke, Elisha closed the heavens. That's not my point. Go to verse 7. This is my point. Verse 7. Then she came and told the man of God. This is my problem. She came back and reported, Sir, the prophecy you gave me, this is what came from it. Look at it. Let's see that again. She came and told the man of God and he said, Go and sell the oil. She came and reported. This is where we fail. She came and acknowledged the grace. Sir, what you said have happened. What do I do now? Sir, you prayed for me. God has helped me. What do I do? I just had a new job. How do I go about it? Some people only remember the grace when they need help. And they forget the grace when they have been helped. Please. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 30, it says, if by grace you are a partaker. So it is grace that makes you partake of the goodness of God in the place. Child of God, don't play with the place where God sends you. Psalms 20 verse 2, he said, God will send you help from the sanctuary. So what happens if you speak against that sanctuary? How will help come for you? I beg you, no matter what, I will make mistakes. Maybe willfully, maybe unwillfully. But no matter what I do, don't speak against me. It is not a law, it is an advice. 
Moses married from a different tribe. Miriam and Aaron spoke against him and God came and gave Miriam leprosy. Why? She spoke against the grace that covered her. Not that Moses was not, was not wrong. No. God will judge Moses, but God has not placed the rod to beat his servants in the hands of people. It is himself. Be careful. Don't speak against the sanctuary. Psalm 20 verse 2. He said, may God send you help from where? From where? From the sanctuary. So how can I speak against the sanctuary where my help is coming from? That is that. If you speak against the sanctuary where your help comes from, you have rejected divine help and intervention in your life. Please be careful. I beg you with my heart. Be careful. Refuse. Paul said, I am what I am. By what? By the grace of God. That's 1 Corinthians 15 verse 30. I am what I am by the grace. Please. This part is very important. Many of us fail in this thing. When you have a little problem, you start speaking against the man of God. The man of God is eating our money. Which is not even first of all true. Hmm. I'm begging you. This thing is like a joke. You will be shocked. Have people around you. The grace will be working for them. It will not be working for you. And the more you get bitter, the more you go under. You get deeper into Satan's. He will capture you. No matter the trial, tribulation, and temptation you face. Don't speak against the sanctuary because that is where your help comes from. This sanctuary cannot be perfect. Kevin cannot be perfect. Karen cannot be perfect. Gomez cannot be perfect. As you two are not perfect. Don't speak against the sanctuary. What more? You now carry the sanctuary and stand among people and begin to tell them. God said to Miriam and Moses to Aaron, He said, Why were you not afraid? God said, Why are you not fear for call Moses in him? Look at what God is saying. Why are you not afraid of the grace you are under? Why were you not afraid to stand and begin to talk about the man of God? God said, I, hey, Miriam, what has happened to you? That is why when God wanted to discipline Miriam, Moses came and interceded. God said, Moses, shift. I must discipline her. God gave her leprosy. Moses begged God. God said, It's a lie. She must be punished. Why? Yet God's question, why were you not afraid to speak against my servant? We live in a generation where, 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 where it, the spirit of the Antichrist is giving people understanding that they can speak against those whom God has placed over them. This is not a joke. Don't speak against your father and your mother. Biological. Don't try it. No matter the mistakes of your biological parent, Keep your mouth shut for your destiny. You have never been ordained by God to discipline your parents. You feel like you, have, you want to tell your father you don't like the way he's treating your mother. You are opening yourself to behave the same way. Be quiet and pray. If you have gotten to a certain age and you want to talk, talk with respect. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. So there is no prayer you can pray to be well if it is honor authority. There are certain things I have vowed. I can never speak against my wife. He that findeth a wife, find what? I cannot, not publicly, I cannot because I understand. The Bible says, if a man maltreat his wife, his prayer will not be answered. It means your, your, my wife is the grace of God in my life. So the way I treat her is the way God will treat my prayer. And that's very dangerous now. So if I think I can maltreat my wife because I am the man and the husband, God will say, okay, I will maltreat your prayer because I am your God and your master. People just talking now. Listen, even if you are in this church, eh, be careful. Even if they, are, they claim to be members, if somebody speaks to you against me, separate from them. They, they, it is not, don't be, just run, say, I know one here. Say, because when he starts like that and they intoxicate you, even if what they are saying may make sense so it may be a true weakness they have seen 
just they say, "Emu pray mu liver." Because most often they are telling you, not for you people to pray, no, to turn your heart against the grace. Because when somebody's heart has been turned against the grace, they have to walk around and employ other people to also turn their heart against the grace. Don't be part of them. Paul said, "He said, mark." He said, about Romans 16, 17. He said, mark them in the church. He said, mark the people that cause division among you and avoid them. He's in the Bible. He said, they are brothers in the church, in departments. Their work is to bring talk about a departmental leader. He said, mark them and avoid them in the church. He didn't say, dread them. He said, when it pass, greet them and pass you. Because if you sit down with them and they start talking, before you know, you start seeing the pastor in a different light. You had loved your man of God, trusted the grace of God upon his life. And when they start talking, instead of acknowledging grace, you begin to acknowledge errors. You begin to acknowledge a mistake. Kevin is not perfect. Just like you, Kevin is working with God. Just like you, Kevin make mistake. Just like you, Kevin fall, Kevin rise up. The fact that I am standing here does not make me better than you. The fact that I am standing here does not make me wiser than you. I am standing here because God has given me an authority. Authority does not mean I know more. It just means I have been privileged. So I am still a child. I am still a young man of 32 years. I may still make mistakes of the youth. But I am getting mature. Now it would be stupid for you to begin to acknowledge my errors and leave the grace because even no matter the mistake i have made you cannot deny that this grace has helped you sometime you cannot deny that there are some things that happen in your life because of this grace so if i make a mistake today why will you allow this mistake cover your eye from all the other things the grace did for you don't speak against the grace don't speak against the altar the Bible says, it shall send you help from the sanctuary. So what happens to the man that speaks against the sanctuary? There are things we don't do. There are people who are pastors who are not my friends. When you just say, speak against a man of God, I say, no, 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 you don't understand. How can you speak? <laughs> you don't, listen to me. You see we so, you see all we, we will not get no other thing. We get our leg grease. I must defend the grace that I have because 2009 10 I was in this town only with one jean and one slippers but I had the grace of God the grace has brought this church the grace has brought 30 branches the grace brought a TV channel the grace brought a radio station the grace brought a Bible school the grace brought a business school the grace brought a football academy the grace brought a recording label it's the grace that brought how can i speak against the grace that made us i am what i am by what so i must protect this grace because i know if i speak against the grace i am undoing my destiny it's like if they say some man don't so close you can't hear the close i can't speak against the grace Korah spoke against moses god say this is arrow and the ground open and swallowed him now this message is not a threat. No. I'm teaching you a principle. Because every time you get bitter or discouraged, the first thing that will come in your head, it is Satan's work. He will make you see errors to talk. Don't do it. Learn it. If you have people who do in this church, please avoid them. Don't hate them. Don't curse them. No. Pray for them. Because maybe they are going through a moment of sorrow and pain but be careful there are some things you can say in a moment of sorrow that you may never be able to undo in a day of joy don't speak no matter what it happen don't speak are you with me here child of god are you sure see romans chapter 11 verse 20 let me show you something there do not boast against the branches but if you do boast remember that you do not support the root but the root supports you you are not supporting your pastor. Your pastor supports you. He said, no matter the offering you give him, he's the one that is supporting you. the Bible. He said, you start boasting, after all, or leave this church. I'm not the one that gave two million for this thing to be done. He said, God said, eh, eh, don't boast. You do not support the root. The root support you. How can you speak against the anointing that will make you? 
The anointing that you cannot deny that helped you one day. Any anointing that has helped you cannot hurt you unless you speak against it. Even if the man of God does not know, the anointing will fight you. Because, they, listen to me, it is very dangerous if you start saying things that can make people stop believing in the grace they were believing. You have become an enemy to the kingdom of God. Even if you are still in the church, sitting on the chair, behaving like a faithful person. Great grace, more grace. But behind, you are talking to people, selling them messages, telling them things that can taunt your heart. For the sake of your destiny and your family, be careful. You see a man of God on TV preaching, you hear, don't talk you against men of God. Acknowledge grace, leave errors for God. Because a man of God may have a weakness, but his anointing can still help you. I would say Elisha was sick. He died, but his bones raised a dead man. He could not heal himself, but his anointing could heal somebody. A man of God may have a problem. It does not hinder the anointing from operating. How do you acknowledge grace? I was talking about confession by service. Serve the grace. Number one is what? Confession. We know that, right? Speak well of the grace. Acknowledge it. Lord, thank you for this grace. Thank you. Pray for your pastor. Lord, thank you for sending me honor this pastor. He said the God of your father will do what? So if you speak against your father, how will his God help you? Are we, are we talking the Bible here? The God of your father will help you. If you not speak against your father, how will his God help you? So your father may not hear, but his God has heard. His God will say, hey, Kevin, I can't help this also, no. I can't help him. He's speaking against you. If I help him, I will empower him to speak more against you. So leave him there first. There are cultures that we don't follow. We for church. We need to talk against our mommy, our pa. Your mommy will burn you. No matter what you do, I mean, you need to talk. Your pa will you need to talk. Your auntie will stay for your house. You need to talk against you. Even your brother, whom I want to stay for the same house, you need to talk against you. This thing will just talk. The, the mouth, the, the mouth. He said, he who can control his tongue is wise and mature. The mouth. Just he talk anyhow. People that don't destroy their life because they don't know how to talk. There are some people you talk against them, nothing happens. Some people you talk against them, heaven, heaven begins to resist you. Don't speak against them. Are you with me, your child of God? So, how do you acknowledge the grace? Number one is confession. Number two is what? Service. Any grace you serve is the grace you have acknowledged. If you said you acknowledge this grace, you must be serving. If I say, let's come and Jacqueline, come and Jacqueline. I have sons and daughters who are not in this town. But when they come to town, as they enter church, they remain at the departments. They can go anywhere and be there for 20 years. As they enter town, as they enter church, that they service. If they are choir, they sit in choir. They will sing. If they are ushers, they join usher. Because no matter where they have gone, as long as they still recognize that they are under this grace, when they enter here, they say, I've come to my father's house. I'm serving. Whether they go and become governors, whether they go and become millionaires, if they were in a department here, when they return, they still acknowledge the grace by saying, ah, my father, I've come back. Serve. And the third way you acknowledge grace is by your offerings to that grace. Now I'm going to show you something from scripture here. Psalms 20 verse 2 says, May God send you help from the sanctuary and remember your offerings. Your what? Your what? Your what? So why does God send you? So the sanctuary that you give offerings to is the one from where God releases help to you. No matter the, how many men of God you love, no matter the altars you love, it is the altar where you give your offering to, where your help is. And now, if this is the altar where you are fed, where, where we pray for you and you are protected, and you carry offering and bring to another altar, nothing will work for you. Because God recognizes the labor of this altar for you. He says, may God remember your offering and your sacrifice. Show me Psalms 20 verse 2 and 3. Let's see that. I don't care what people say. I will, I will give my tithes. I will sow seed to my father. I don't care what they, how they insult us that we are stupid. I choose to be foolish for Christ. 
may, may he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Go to verse 3. Hear what he says there. May he remember all your all your offering. All your offering. There is no help. All your offering. All your offering. You identify yourself with a sanctuary by your sacrifice on the altar. Sometimes when we preach, people with a bad mind change the message and say we only want money from people. Not knowing that by, they are being used by Satan to turn the hearts of people against kingdom principles. And let me tell you something here. That is why you give your tithes to the altar that fits your life. In Genesis 14 verse 18, Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek because he was saying, you are, it, it is your God that has given me help. You study Genesis 28. Jacob told God, he said, if you keep me safe, I will come back here and give my tithes. Genesis 28. Verse 22. Your tithes. Jesus said, Peter, go and catch a fish. You see, corn in his mouth. Pay my tax and your tax. Pay my own first for your, your tithes. Your tithes and your offering. Your sacrifice. Sometimes after you come, we pray for you and you go, your business increase. You take us and say, Ah, sir, I come to acknowledge the grace. That's how you acknowledge grace. I've come with the seed. It has worked. The woman went back to Elisha. Sometimes you can bring the offering. The man will say, Take it back. But because you have acknowledged the grace, thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that gives you power to make well. How do you show your remembrance to the grace? You acknowledge it in the day you succeed. Before going for exam, they pray for you. When you pass, you return to the altar. Even if you fail, you still return to the altar. Because you know the altar will work for you. May He send you help from the sanctuary. How can you speak against an altar that is standing for your life? An altar from where anointing is coming for you. God blesses men through altars, through men. How can you stand against your own altar? So, you confess, you speak well about the grace, you acknowledge it. In the place of prayer, Father, thank you for my father prophet giving. Thank you. Grace. Thank you Lord because this grace is helping me. The more you talk like that, the more the grace helps you. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Some people are too quick. Some people when they are blessed, they edit us from their testimony. They make us think we never existed. They, they forget that one day, we do not know that just laying of hands. Oh, if you ignore the people that God used to bless you, you are hindering God from sending other people to bless you. Even if it looks insignificant, I told you, thanksgiving to God is not genuine until you recognize the human agents. Until you recognize the people that God used to help you, your thanksgiving to God is not true. If my wife cook food, and I say thank you Jesus, Jesus did not cook that food. After thanking my wife, I thank God. I must recognize her effort. As a pastor, I must recognize your efforts as members because God used you to help me. God used workers here to help me. I cannot be saying every day, thank you, Jesus. No, I also thank workers. Sometimes, if I have money, I buy them food. Sometimes, if I have money, I buy rice, I give to all the workers. That's my way of saying, I acknowledge your effort, I acknowledge your labor. And if I have more, I will do more. There are times some people call me, send me instead of one million francs. I'll take the money. Ask my wife, ask Pastor Ngome, we'll take it and buy rice. I say give to the workers or just cost on two or four workers that have need house rent we pay their house rent we can't do for all but at least the little we can do we must do let the workers know that they are not working in vain that we celebrate their effort that we are here because of them never ever despise people that God is using to help you if not you will not see his help again acknowledge them acknowledge grace acknowledge help acknowledge people's efforts in your life oh God we live in a time where gratitude is no longer present. You can help somebody ten times, but the day you make a mistake, ah, 
the way the person begins to talk is as if you have never done anything in their life. You say, ah, but I've had it. You have done nothing. That is a demonic spirit of bitterness and ingratitude. Don't have that kind of a spirit. Me, Kevin. There are people who are here in this church that have left. I have never spoken again. Then. Not even in private. Though. And I will never do it. You know why? There was a day those people helped me. There are many workers who have left. And many of them have spoken against me. And this is the problem. Anything you say against me, I will always know. Either I know when I pray it, or the Holy Spirit will torment the person you said it to, and the person will tell me. But God is making me to hear, to test me. If I hear that a worker spoke against me, and I curse them, I have failed my test before God. I'm sure I'm immature. That I'm still a child, and not a man of God. If I'm a man of God, and I hear, and this person spoke, said against you that you are this, you are this, I must hear and say, oh, it is well. Lord, forgive her. I'm showing my maturity. That's why I will keep being promoted because I've understood that in the day you make a mistake, Bible says, do not laugh at your brother the day he falls. I should lift you up and not laugh at you. Many of them have left and they speak against me. I have not spoken against them, not even in their room, not even with my wife, not even on the altar. But I know the things they say. I cannot do that. Why? Because I know. One day, these children help me even though something happened on the way and they got angry and they not speak against me if they have refused to see how I help them me I choose to see how they help me that's my own character that is why I will never go down because I've chosen to acknowledge grace to acknowledge hell and that's how God keep directing my path rise on your feet with a shout of glory